Hello, everybody. And welcome to Christ Blessed City podcast. We will get more professional as time goes on. I'm Hilary. And I'm Amy. And I wholeheartedly concur to what my friend just said. <laughs> she means she agrees. And we are coming to you from Colchester Baptist Church. Right, what are we talking about today? We well, are talking about new beginnings. How exciting is that, isn't it? It can be. Well, this is our first podcast and That's exciting. we've learned how to adjust microphone levels. And scripts. We're throwing them out. You Absolutely. Out the window. <laughs> and we're fully entrusting this episode to God and what he has to say to you through us right here, yeah. right now. Absolutely. Mm. We are going to concentrate on new beginnings. And that comes from Isaiah 43, 19. It says... Yep. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Mm. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Let's talk a little bit about a way in the wilderness and streams Mm. in the wasteland. I love that phrase. What do you think it means? Hmm. (laughs) Well. That's put her on the spot, folks. I know pressure over here. Absolutely not. Um, Thank you, sis. What I think, to me, the way this reads is that no matter what we're going through, if you're in a wilderness, the thing you're going to feel is perhaps uh, you're getting lost, you Mm -hmm. can't see your way, Um, it's so difficult, survival is difficult. It is. And life can feel like that. Yes. Many times. And then suddenly you come across Mm. a road. Yes. Away in the wilderness. Or you come upon a stream. And that means that you've got something firm under your feet. You've got water to drink. That's good. Obviously, the road is firm, but the water is to drink. Not the other way around. (laughs) Well, it gets confusing. Well, it does. But if if you're in a wasteland, and we just had a few really hot days of late summer, didn't we? (laughs) Yes, yes. If you're in a Um, desert... And some, I think some translations do call it a desert. Mm -hmm. Then, Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you are also suffering from dehydration, fatigue. Possibly you've gone so far that you're seeing mirages. Yes, yes. And then you come across this little oasis. And out of the oasis is a path that leads you. Well, we know it leads to salvation. (laughs) Absolutely. Isn't that amazing? And... Even though we've been Christians for a few years, Mm. um, we're still learning day to day. And after you've been through that wilderness, through that wasteland, and you're parched Mm. from thirst, but you make it till the end because you have the hope in God, you come out at the other end. And I don't mean to sound cheesy, but you do come out at the other end stronger. Stronger, refreshed. Absolutely. And with a new understanding basically yes it's nothing is ever wasted in god's kingdom whatever so you've gone through yeah. and we we as amy says we've both been through mm. wildernesses of our own um yeah and together in a smaller way so far <laughs> yeah but absolutely yeah god has been mm. when you look back you realize that all those times you thought you were on your own god was there i mean even in the wilderness when the uh in the desert when in Exodus, when the Israelites were wandering for 40 years, they had God before them. They knew God was there. He was there as a pillar of smoke in the day and a pillar of fire at night. And when we look back, or well, certainly when I look back at the times when I felt, um, for instance, I've suffered with, with mental illness in my time, with depression and anxiety, and I call that my wilderness. But when I look yeah. back, I was never actually alone. Yeah. God was with me the whole time. And that's such a powerful testimony. When I, yeah. Whenever I hear you talk about it, yeah. you can say that you've come out at the other end and you can yes. firmly see God's hand was yes. there guiding yes. you. How did it feel in the moment when you were going through that, through those ups and downs? and Desolate. Mm. Absolutely desolate. At my lowest, I would not have been here if God hadn't. Wow. kept me from harming myself i mean this is a bit deep for a first episode but that's the truth yeah um god had a plan for me 
and he kept me going. Sometimes barely, but he kept me going. I never actually raised a hand against myself. Mm. Unless you're talking about binge eating, (laughs) which is also a form of self-harm. I I went for that in a big way Mm. Um, and ended up in a big way, as you can imagine. Well, I think many of our listeners right now can Mm. relate to to what you are sharing. Well, what I'm actually working on at the moment is if I do get upset over everything, anything, not everything, if I do get upset over (laughs) anything... She does not get upset easily, no. (laughs) That I don't turn to a packet of chocolate digestives, which are my favourite by choice, as everybody (laughs) knows. Um, They are the best biscuit. Well, I would make an argument for custard creams in there as well. Absolutely, I second that. But I'm no longer eating them by the packet. Understood. It's the important thing. And this week I was a trifle upset, as as you know, over yep. something or nothing. Yeah. And I did not reach for the biscuit. Woohoo! That is Amazing. a tiny victory. Absolutely. And I think we need to celebrate those small victories we along do. the road. Yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah. We do indeed. And not just beat ourselves down that, no. well, we haven't got it perfectly fine from the first go. Exactly. I mean, God is the God of new beginnings. He, he Yes. That's what we're talking about. Absolutely. <laughs> what do you do yeah. when you can't find a way out or if you're worrying about something nonstop? I'm talking anxiety here, folks. Yes, and that's a powerful question because, well, hello, I've been there. Um, yeah, haven't we all? That is true. Well, my human side tends to uh, panic find hard to breathe, Mm. maybe start crying after Mm. a few days of repressing the feeling. I've been known to be a master at repressing my anxiety. And my famous catchphrase two years ago was, I'm fine, everything's fine. Yeah. That's everybody's (laughs) default answer. How are you doing today? I'm fine. I am breaking on the inside, (laughs) but I'm fine. Yeah, because we don't want to lose face. We don't want to um, seem weak. No. So true, so true. Only the strong yeah. don't break. I was going to say only the strong break, but actually that is truth. I think there is, yeah. That is truth. I yeah. was so strong before I had my breakdown, so, so strong, mm-hmm. and that's what led me to break. Because you need a bit of flexibility. You actually that's need good. to yeah. lean on God. You do. And Absolutely. I didn't. Yeah. And I broke. So now I try very much to cast my anxieties on God. Now, where does that come from? And that comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Cast your, all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Oh, that is so true. And that is something I've been mm. really learning to do this year. Um, Can you break yeah. it down? How? How? How are you learning to rely more on God and cast? It is not easy. Those- easy because my instinct is to say god take everything yeah but i'll just take these back (laughs) it's like handing in a pile of paperwork and there's receipts in there and postcards and goodness knows what (laughs) and you give in the pile and it's sitting on the table in front of you and you think oh what was that oh i remember what that bill was for right and i'm just going to keep that and remember it Mm -hmm. and worry Mm -hmm. about it and he says cast all your all right you can have it back And then you take out a postcard where somebody said something nasty to you and that goes round and round in your head and he says, all your anxieties, all right, you can have it back. (laughs) And sometimes it's just really hard because as you're giving Mm. your anxieties to him with one hand, you're taking them back with the other. With the other hand. Because we want control. Absolutely, that is so true. Yes, I hate to admit it, but it's true. And it's part of being an independent woman. Yes. Which yes. I shouldn't pride myself too much on, but it can get out of control. It can get very much mm. out of control. I mean, basically, pride is a no-no yeah. all the way through. Absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry about the creaking, folks. That's me leaning on the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my bones. Note to self, buy a non-squeaky <laughs> table. <laughs> so, yes, how I do it is mm. uh, I just practice. It is like a muscle. Practice, that's the, good. The more you yep. exercise in the gym, yep. so I'm told, don't actually do it myself. I've tried and just, then I gave up. <laughs> the stronger you get. 
And it's the same with this. The more you leave things with God, the more you say, I'm sorry, Lord, I took that back. Yes. Here, have it again. Put um, it back down. My daughter, easier, put it back down. Exactly. Mm. The easier it is. And he is good. He will fix things mm. if you leave him to do it unhindered. That, that is so good. I know I impressed myself. <laughs> Well, actually, what you're saying is, for me, it links back to verse 6 in 1 Peter 5, mm. where it actually says, Humble yourselves, Yes. therefore, under God's mighty hands. He is this mighty Savior. He's all-powerful. But in order for him to lift us up mm. in the due time, in due mm. time, mm, I need to humble myself and recognize I can't control this. Mm. Yes. But Lord, you know, mm. and it's in your hand. It's part of your plan. It's part of your plan because when something bad happens, usually people, even non-believers, they mm. would t- tend to turn around to God and say, why did God allow this? Yes. You're the Christian, tell me. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. No. Exactly. We don't know God's plan yeah. and we don't <clears throat> understand everything. Sometimes our portion of it becomes clear with hindsight. True. Sometimes it doesn't. And when it says in due time, yes, that can rely on us more than we think. I Interesting. Mean, it can be that <laughs> yeah. God's plan is not for this time, but for a time in the near future, the distant future, whatever. There's that word soon. I've been watching The Chosen and that word soon is just, <laughs> it's taken on a life of its own because soon can mean right now, yes. right this second, or it can mean in a thousand, two thousand Absolutely. years. Absolutely. Because time for God is different. Time does not apply to God. No. He created it. He created yeah. But for us, um, the way that it can rely on us if it takes a long time is if we keep taking control back, if we get stubborn, if we say, I don't want to oh, do the, that. Yeah. That's why yeah. we need to humble ourselves. And these are words mm. we don't like. No. Humble, uh, submit, obey. Yes. We've even taken it out of marriage vows. Mind you, I'm, I'm for that. Um, <laughs> but I don't know why. I've never been anywhere near an altar. That's but a topic need... for another episode. <laughs> yes, sure, it folks. <laughs> yes, it is. We are prepared to talk to you about anything from PMT yes. to HRT. Absolutely, and everything in between. Oh, buckle your seatbelts, I'll tell you. <laughs> anyway, uh, the longer we resist God, the harder mm. it is for us. Yes. I mean, look at Jonah and the whale. Oh, my goodness. Jonah was asked, to, yes. told to go to Nineveh. Yep. He ran in the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. He got stuck. Got on a ship. Yep. Was the reason for a storm. Got thrown overboard. Swallowed by a whale. Puked up on a beach. I'm sorry, <laughs> but that is true. And then he still had to go to Nineveh. So, I mean, yeah, in a way. Exactly. It, it's how many detours we take. Yeah. We're still going to end up where we're meant to be. God's plan God's will happen plan. in God's way. And he's already taken into account how we're going to try and be difficult and stubborn and everything else he has a plan yeah he knows us yeah he loves us he's chosen us despite all our faults and quirks and stubbornness and ocd tendencies ocd tendencies amy don't know who they apply to in this room but hey oh hey i'll admit to being a control freak but i'm not ocd (laughs) as you can imagine it's a nice mix for working together we haven't butted heads yet yeah. But what, however many obstacles we throw in God's path, I'm going to say he will have his way because yeah. his way is good and just and perfect. Mm. And we need to learn to submit. Life will be so much easier. It would. Yeah. And I think it takes a, like you said earlier, a flexible heart. Yes. And it, it takes a mature heart. Mm. Uh, children, babies, you're born selfish, you learn for the rest of your life how to take care of others over your own needs. Yes. And it's the same in the spiritual realm. Yeah. Baby Christians as opposed to spiritual, mature Christians. Yeah. Spiritually mature Christians even. And uh, how you get there is through testing and growth. And the more open you are to that, the faster you will get there. Not the fastest necessarily good because... 
I've learned a lot this year about patience as well. Patience is not in my natural list of virtues. <clears throat> We're all working on something at some point in our lives. Yeah. And on that note, friends, I think it's time to wrap it up. Okay. We've enjoyed talking to you. And yes, we have. And we look forward to the next time. Definitely. So it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from her. Bye. Bye.